passion. How do we find it? That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and uplifting life partner. Now, this particular conversation is very important because passion is actually an emotion. It's a deep emotion, a very satisfying emotion, a very, uh, what can we say? Emotion that makes you feel like you're actually experiencing this journey we call life. Now, first, let's address this thing, purpose, which you guys have heard me talk about before. Uh, if most people have tried to make purpose seem like it's a mystical thing that we have to figure out in order to have a successful life. Well, to me, purpose is real simple. It's not something that you're chasing after. It's recognizing that you came here as a human being to experience the human experience. And that means all the emotions that are tied in that journey. Um, because the only way you know which emotions actually move you is by experiencing all of those. Because believe it or not, there are things that we may think is negative, like anger and sadness or whatever, that we would consider to be negative emotions. But for a lot of people, those are actually the emotions that move them in their lives in order to accomplish the things that they want. So all emotions are not, quote unquote, negative or positive. It's figuring out which ones move you as an individual. But first, you got to recognize what your purpose is. And your purpose is actually to experience all that so that you can figure out which emotions move you and allow those emotions to do that. Now, one of those emotions happens to be passion. It's that thing that you come across that creates that fire and you just get pumped up. It could be a woman. It could be a man. It could be a car. I know some people will instantly go, no, that guy, that's material stuff. No, it can be material things. Something that really just lights your fire. And that's what we're looking for in our lives. But first, recognize the purpose, and then it becomes easier to do that. And again, that's knowing that you came here to experience being a human being. If you notice that finding something you can be, be, get passionate about becomes easier because your eyes are open. If not, you're going through life looking for this thing called purpose and things that you can become passionate about, you'll miss because of where your mindset is. So, but the passion. I remember hearing um, Janet At Atwood, A-T-T -T Wood, um, share a method. And I heard this a long time ago, but it's a powerful method in order to find passion. Is What you do is you come up with maybe the top 10 things that you want in your life or you believe you want in your life or you believe will create passion for you. And you line them up. And what you do is you go through and you take the thing you put on as number one and then compare it to number two. And so like if you say number one, let's say is a house. Number two is Corvette. Well, you look at those two and you say, if you could only have one of those two, which would you take? You go, ooh, that's... that's that's a tough one because my dream car is a Corvette. But I know I need a roof over my head, so I'm going to say house. That's the most important. Okay, now you're going to take number one and compare it to number three. Let's say another thing that you would want would be uh, to travel. So you would take number one, the house, and compare it to travel. If you go, which one, if I can only have one of those two, I can either have a house or I get to travel the world, which am I going to take? And you go, man, again, that's a tough one because I want to travel the world. But it is most important for me to have a home. So home is still number one. Or for some people, they'd be like, shoot, I can live in an apartment. And wherever I'm traveling to, that's going to be my home anyway. So travel is going to be, it's going to beat out home. So travel becomes number one. And so now you're going to take that, whatever one, and you're now going to compare it to number four. You guys see that? And when you get through, your number one thing that you want or that you could be passionate about, you will realize. And you place that as number one. So now we're going to have nine things remaining. 
So now we're going to go back to the list and do that same exact procedure all over again because house is not included now because it, it was number one when we went through the whole test. It became the number one priority. We put it as number one. Now we're going to find what's number two. But we're going to take those remaining nine and go through the exact same steps to come up with number two. You guys follow that? And the key for me is, is find the top three. You don't need to overwhelm yourself and go, ooh, now to organize all of my top 10 folks that can become overwhelming. And chances are you won't end up doing nothing. As we know that, what do they call it? The, uh, the jack, jack of all trades and the ace of none because there's no focus there. So what we want to do is get the top three and then that's where we're going to start to spend our time and energy on how do we make those three things a reality. Does that make sense? So that's an incredible method. I remember when I first heard her say that, I was sitting there going, that just, that's so simple, but it's not being taught. And it's really an easy method to figure out what you could pursue as a passion. Does that make sense? And folks, if it doesn't light your fire, move on. It doesn't have to be a home. You know, the world tells you that you have to. It doesn't have to be. Some people want to spend their whole life just traveling. And that's what they, I know I have a, um, a friend that that's what she's doing. She's spending her retirement just going from place to place. No home. She doesn't want one, but she's taking all of her money. And that's what she's doing. She's just taking it and traveling to different countries, different states, stay there three, four, five months. Folks, that's not good, bad, right, or wrong. That's something that she's able to do because she's passionate about seeing the world. That is her passion. The main key, tick, uh, key there to take away is, as we keep saying, don't let other people decide what's important for you and what should be your passion and what should be at the top of your list. That's why we're doing the list is so that you can figure it out and then go out and pursue it. And I think this even holds true even in the way you see yourself. Take the top 10 qualities or the top five, if, the, if that'll be easier for you, because this is not to make this a complicated exercise, but figure out the top five qualities that you look for in an individual. Like if there's a certain star or a celebrity or friend or just someone that you just look at and you just, wow, you admire who they are and, and where they are in their life. Write down those five things and then do the exact same exercise and put them in order, which is most important. And you need to know why it's important to you because that will also tell you what is truly important to you. And then when you get your top three things about the person that you admire most, now you get to do that old conversation, what I know a lot of people don't like to do. Look in the mirror and figure out, do you have those three things that you look for? And if not, how do you acquire them? How do you get to that point in your life? If you look at, like I said, character as a top quality, and then you look at yourself and go, ooh, at times my integrity is out of check or my character is out of check and it's more than it should be, then spend your time and energy. Where is it that I fall out of place? When is the challenges that cross my life where my integrity is challenged and I let it slip? And fine tune those because that's what the journey is about. The journey is about things that cross your path enjoying those things, being passionate about those things. But first, so that we don't have overwhelm because there's so much going on in the world, we can call it the list. <laughs> uh, we've talked about building the list before in relationships, but that's the same thing here. Build that list to figure out what you're passionate about in yourself, your life, I mean, you can see how you could do this in everything and then spend your time and energy there. Anything that's keeping you away from those after you've got clarity, 
Don't give that your time because as human beings, we get caught in living. And, and by that I'm saying life just happens and we, get, we, we never get to do the things that we truly say we could be passionate about or the things that are important or significant to us, even as far as calling friends and family, which we know is important. But we get so caught in living. I remember at an event, a guy said that. He said, you have friends and family to get mad at you when you call them. And they're like, it's about time you called. And your first thought is, you ain't called me. And the only reason we're talking now is because I called. And he said, don't get mad at them. The difference is you have control over your life and they don't. In other words, life is controlling them. They wake up, whatever happens, you know, the things that step in front of them, that's how they address it. But there's no organization in their life. And that's what we want to do here. And that's why the better chance of us finding something that we're passionate about, where we can put our energies, is by us actually prioritizing. And then be open as you're living the life, even following those three things or, you know, those top three. Be open to the fact that something else may cross your path and really light a fire. That doesn't mean jump and jump ship because that's where we <laughs> become that jack of all trades again and the ace of none. But what you do, if it's really passionate, you get to bring it into the test again and see how does it stack up to those top three. And if it doesn't move up the list, then it was just something you were excited about. You don't have the time to put into that right now because the, the, the top three is going to take up more than enough of your energy and time. But if all of a sudden it moves to where it's more important than all those other three, see, that's the key to life. Being open to that and not being so uh, driven like the world, the world tries to teach us, like, find that thing that lights you and spend your, you know, like people want to be a doctor and they're passionate about that for a little bit. But then they go through school and they put all the time and energy. And so they stay because they put all the time and energy and they're like, ah, but they're not passionate. Folks, time to move on. I'm a person I really truly believe. Doesn't matter how much time you put into school. I don't care if you put 10, 15 years into school. If the passion's not there, you shouldn't be there. Time for you to find something else. The key is if you've been open along this journey we call life, probably the reason you're not excited about that is because something else did cross your path and you didn't pursue it and it's tugging at you in the background. It's tugging at you. You know those people that say they've always wanted to be a musician, but they're out doing something else because the world and family told them, folks, you got to figure out how to bring that music, that entertainment, whatever it is, into your life. Life is too short not to pursue those things that you have passion for. Find them and use them. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Uh, for those of you that we talk on Relationship uh, Monday, I mean Relationship Monday, Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you this coming Thursday. And then for those of you on Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you next week. And run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. See all the different programs and things that I have going on right now. But folks, just remember, passion is an emotion. And it can be found if you're actually enjoying this thing we call life and you stay open to the possibility of what's going on. Learn to enjoy the moment. Be passionate that you got this moment. Because there's a whole bunch of people that aren't here to celebrate this moment. So folks, uh, I hope you learned something from that. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.